Good morning. We're doing all right. We're having a good morning. I'm sitting by my favorite person. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> and look, he's blushing. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome back as we continue for another installment of Living in the Word. We are continuing our journey on, um, it's kind of a sub-series of crazy faith, where we are continuing to talk about using our faith to fuel our future. We're so excited that you decided to tune in and join with us. Quick announcements before we hop into the Word. First, of course, remember to join us for Wednesdays in the Word. That will be starting at 5.30. Be sure to join Pastor Will and Sweetie for prayer. Our prayer line is 351-999-3535. It starts at 530 on Wednesdays. Right after that, come on inside the sanctuary. We are live and in person and in color, and it's good to go. And so come on in while Minister Hogan gives us our midweek Bible study. And then stay for my favorite minister to do the Genesis study with the young professionals. Come on in. We're sure to have a good time. You're sure to learn something. And we are continuing to study faith. Now, I'm not just going to keep bragging on them. I'm going to let them talk because I think that Minister Cole has some pretty good revelation for us. What are you sharing with us today? Who are we calling down from the Hall of Faith? So today, we're not even actually in the Hall of Faith. We are talking about the man who hung on the cross next to Jesus Christ. Um, Does he he have a name? Well, so it's interesting when I was trying to research what this man's name was, um, there's a lot of people who seem to think his name is different. Mm -hmm. um, some people say that his name was Demas. Demas. Uh, mm -hmm. Some said he was Didymus. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholics have a different name for him. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to refer to him as the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but he, he has this name, and, and I think one of the things that interests me about him is in my office here at the church is that I have this uh, piece of word art on the wall. And it has the reference to Luke 2, 30, uh, 23, 39. And it, it simply says, the middle man, the man on the cross, the middle cross said that I could come. Wow. And, and I, I, when I tell you I saw it in the store, I was like I was completely blown away. I was like, I've got to have that. You know, this, this idea that even no matter what I do, who I am, I have access. That, I mean, that, 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 that has always kind of excited me. And so when I began to think about faith, I began to think about the man who was on the cross next to Jesus. Um, because there was two other men, who, two other thieves, two other men who were justified in being killed. There were two men who were not martyrs. On death row. They were on death row. Mm -hmm. They had done the crime, and now it was time to do the time. They were on the cross, the cross is next to Jesus Christ, and... Rumor has it that in the beginning, both of them were mocking Jesus just as the crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, let's set the stage. You, you know, it is a Friday evening. It is the good Friday. It is the Friday after Jesus has left the Garden of Gethsemane. He has done all of his final things. Peter has denied Jesus three times. The crock has crowed. Jesus has carried his cross up, up Calvary's hill, up to Golgotha, and he is hanging on a cross. There are three nails in his hands and in his feet. And there is a crowd there cheering for his death. Mm -hmm. Two other men are hanging there with him. And both of the men next to him are having small talk. Mm -hmm. And they're saying things like, well, if you're the son of God or you're the, if you're the king of the Jews, if you're the Messiah, why don't you get us all down from here? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're so great and so amazing and you're so innocent, just, you know, go ahead and get us all down from here. And they're mocking him. Mm. And so we, we go on down, and, 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 and most of the seven sayings are happening. Jesus has, has thirsted, and he has made his, he's, he's, he's asked the Lord to forgive, him, forgive them. And then all of a sudden, one of the men hanging on the cross makes this statement. He says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, surely this day you will be in paradise. And I want to talk today about the faith of the man who shifts from berating Jesus, mm -hmm. from being a life, living a life of debauchery, mm -hmm. from living um, a heinous lifestyle, mm -hmm. who realizes that Jesus is the Christ when nobody else will. Can I just uh, back up for just a moment, uh, Minister Cole? I mean, because you've got two men here both on death row, mm -hmm. their life basically is eking out mm -hmm. at this point. Obviously, they both have done something that was deserving mm -hmm. of death, mm -hmm. you know. 
And in this, I see a picture of all of us. Okay. All, all of us are criminals in a sense right. because we've all sinned against God. Right. All of us deserve to die just as those two men hanging on the cross. Absolutely. But what we see here is one of these men is going to make a decision that's going to absolutely revolutionize his destiny. His eternity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, because yes. you have to think about it, right? They are, they, their pathway to hell is paid. They got the plane absolutely. ticket. They are boarding the plane. It is, it is, it, it, well, not, maybe not the plane, but the sinking ship. Like, they are mm -hmm. on yeah. the way there. Like, it, yeah. it is not a, this is not a precious little lamb right. who has a chance after chance after right. chance. Like, death is imminent. Like yes. we're we're hours and minutes away from death. Yes. And if you most of us say that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is true for one, mm -hmm. but not true for the other. My God. Right. And right. so I you know, I, I just kinda wanna pause there because I think we, we, we make the statement you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you know, the Lord knows my heart, I'm 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 stuck in my ways, I this is how I am, mm -hmm. I am. Everybody can change. Mm -hmm. Anybody can Everybody. make a reversal, and it's yes. not too late. Yeah, yes. it is never too late. It's never too late. Yes, you know, and 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 I I kind of want to take a sec. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, as long as there's breath in your body. Yeah, as long yeah. as there's <laughs> breath in your body. <laughs> yes. You know, history kind of paints a picture of these two men, uh, the the criminal who failed to repent. Mm -hmm. uh, history says that his name was Justice. Mm -hmm. Now he was an egregious sinner. He he was just a rank and at what we call a rank center. Mm -hmm. You know, had no God regard for God. He was irreverent. And um, the other guy, as you stated, uh, some history book says his name was Didymus. Mm -hmm. Well, we know Didymus, in a sense, started out kind of looking at things of faith, mm -hmm. you know, or kind of being inclined toward uh, God. But, but something happened he saw something in the priesthood, and so he turned, and then the world influenced him. And so here he is now in a po at a point where he's become a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of speaks to our young people, mm -hmm. you know, because oftentimes we see things that kind of say, ah, you know, church isn't what I thought it was, or or you see somebody who professes to be a believer, you know. And they don't you walk. Sit, yeah, <laughs> you know. So so, uh, and I think sometimes when believers are disingenuous, or we practice hypocrisy, we don't always think about the impact mm -hmm. that it has on the old onlookers, and we keep talking about this thing about where the only Bible that some, some people will ever read. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought I would uh, bring that fact in because we are talking about someone who may at one point have been inclined to God, mm -hmm. but he witnessed something mm -hmm. that damaged his faith. And I think that kind of segues us here, that he's, he's hanging on this cross. Yes. You know, he's, he's, he's suffering just as Jesus is suffering. Yes. You know, there he's, his hands are pierced. <laughs> you know, he's 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 been whipped and beaten and scorned. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's not a pretty situation. But he's he's sitting there acknowledging his pain, but watching the grace with which Jesus is carrying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're talking about Jesus. They're putting vinegar on his tongue. If they put vinegar on my tongue and I was thirsty, and I'm being going through pain, there are some nice obscenities that would at least come to thought mind. They may not come out, but they're going to at least come to mind, right? Yes. <laughs> no. Well, I'll no. say this. Even if you have not been beaten and you're not hanging mm. on the cross, if you taste vinegar, they you're not going to be a pleasant person. No. <laughs> you know? It's going to come flying exactly. out. Exactly. But so. he, he takes it. You know, he's being whipped. He mm -hmm. takes it. He doesn't, the Bible says he doesn't utter a mumbling word. Like, he, he, yes. like he, he's, 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 he's going through, through this. And then at the pinnacle of, of this, this disgraceful experience, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What, what do you think about that statement, Avery? I think that was a turning point. Because, you know, we, get, we know that there were seven things Jesus said on the cross. There are plenty of studies about it. Um, and 
I would try to recall all of them right now, but I feel like I may forget one, so I won't. <laughs> but, you know, we have the his last little testament, basically, of him. I'm always going to find a law. <laughs> but he uh, basically tells, you know, John, Mary is your mother, Mary, this is your son. Mm -hmm. You know, like basically look after each other, right? Mm -hmm. I know that my mama is a widow, and I know that widows, you know, aren't really taken care of. I'm her oldest child. I need somebody to step in that shoe, right? Mm -hmm. We have um, the I'm thirsty. We see his humanity um, even more so exemplified. Mm -hmm. um, we have this moment, though. When, cause, cause in this moment we see all three here in the, we see three of the seven in Luke twenty three, and the first one we see is Father forgive them for we know not what to do what they do. Mm -hmm. The next one we see is you know surely this day you will be with me in paradise, and then the last one we see is Father I commit unto you my spirit. Mm -hmm. And to me those three things illustrate you know what Jesus came to do for all of us, which was mm -hmm. he forgave us for our sins. He gave us a way into heaven, and mm -hmm. then he showed us how for us to live our lives, submitted unto God, right? Mm -hmm. He does those same three things here, and all the way to the end, he's still saving people. Mm -hmm. And I think that even in that moment of, if I have nothing else to lose, right? Mm -hmm. If I think the gig is up, listen, now, they done caught you, your boys, and the, the, the boys have deserted you, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Peter out here denying you, don't mm -hmm. nobody believe you. Look, the sun even, like, ain't even shining. Like, clearly, mm -hmm. you are not who we think you are. It's mm -hmm. time for you to give this up. I think that my moment of aha would have been when he turned and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. Like, that example of forgiveness of, you know, y'all are mocking me. And, yes, I actually can call down legions of angels. And I, I could do all of these things. But mm -hmm. I'm still choosing to be in a place of forgiveness. You know, I'm, I'm choosing forgiveness over vengeance. I'm choosing forgiveness over, you know, saving myself. And I'm choosing love. And I'm yep. choosing love. Mm -hmm. And in choosing that love, I think that was the, the pivot. Mm -hmm. If I was standing next to Jesus, you know, I, as we are all, like you said, like minutes away from death, like at any moment now, this is going to mm -hmm. be it. And I would think that I would be thinking, let's just hurry up and get this over with. But mm -hmm. instead, he still musters up enough strength to say, now, wait a minute. Like, he, he hadn't cussed nobody out yet. He mm -hmm. ain't trying to get off of his cross. Mm -hmm. He's talking about forgive them. And, 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 and not only, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, but it's, it's even a prayer of sin, of mm -hmm. sorts. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just this statement of, I forgive you, but he's even praying Pray. for the people that are persecuting him. Mm -hmm. He is exemplifying the idea that, you know, even in my darkest hour, I can still muster up a prayer. Mm -hmm. I think that was the example that was shown to the thief on the cross who turned. Is he's, he's, He probably looked up and said, now, wait a minute. Now, mm -hmm. I know I ain't that saying I'm forgive nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so now yes. I'm saying, okay, God, forgive me. Like, I want to be with you. And, and, and Cole, you brought up such a great point. That he says in verse 40, 30, 42, when you come into your kingdom. Mm -hmm. like he didn't have any doubts at this point. Yeah. We had, the conversation completely changed from, you know, they hung up this sign that says, if you're king of the Jews and save us, mm -hmm. and here is the king of the Jews to, I know you king. Mm -hmm. And I know you going. And, mm -hmm. and wherever you going, I want to be there with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that sign in your office just, it always brings, it almost like brings tears to my eyes. I'm so, so, so emotional, guys. Yes. But um, just in my sensitiveness of just like, you know, I can see this man who has lived this horrible life, who doesn't deserve anything, you know, coming up to the gates. And, you know, in my head is really cartoonish. And Gabriel's standing there and he's got his checklist. And he was like, now, what's your name again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's man like, in the middle. like the, the, the man in the middle said I could come. Mm -hmm. like, 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 think about it. Like, y'all have not always been <laughs> Like, you know, using somebody else's name to get something that you want. Influence. Yes. Influence. Or like, you know, oh, I'm here. To, I've gone to the courthouse before, and I was like, I'm here to see Vanessa Jones. <laughs> like, I'm in court. <laughs> I, I know somebody on the other side of this yeah. wall bad me in, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm trying to go to a party or something. I said, like, oh, my friends are already in there. Mm -hmm. Like, for him to have the courage, you know, whoever wrote it, whoever put yeah. it together, of just like, like, the man in the middle said, I could come. So I know I'm in the right place. I just need you to kind of let me in. Yeah, like, yes. does he have credence here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 he said I could come, so I came. So 
So here yeah. I am. I'm ready to be saved. Do I have a mansion? Do I have a <laughs> like, like, could y'all throw one up for me real quick? Yeah. Yes. Well, really, I'm yes. happy to be here. Yes. Honestly, is what I think yes. it was because, you know, he just, his word said, Jesus, just remember me. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, not necessarily give me grace or show me mercy. It wasn't as begging. He didn't know about the match. He didn't know about none of it. You know, I, I would venture to say he hadn't been around the church or the church people. He didn't know about the mansions, but for what he got in those, those few moments on the cross next to this individual, watching what he had gone through, mm-hmm. as, as we, we've, we've talked about the, the, the glory of the Lord shining on somebody, sometimes you can just look at somebody and know mm-hmm. that they know the Lord. Mm-hmm. You can look at some people and can't know that they don't know much of anything, but you can look at some people mm-hmm. and know that they know the Lord. And mm-hmm. I think, um, as you said, that turning point was when he he asked for forgiveness for these people who were mocking and spitting and mm-hmm. doing all of these cruel things with a, with a peace about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, this, this really creates a, a hunger in me. Uh, Sister Vanessa, and I don't mean this as a criticism, Mm -hmm. but we hear so much teaching about blessing now. We do. You know, uh, what subdivision we're living in, Mm -hmm. you know, what we're driving, our career, how many figures in our income. And and sometimes we use this as sort of, I guess, the evidence Mm -hmm. that God is really filling us up. Oh, look what I drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, you stepping on toes, Pastor. (laughs) Hanging on the cross, there was nothing that this thief could see in Jesus Mm -hmm. except godliness. Yes. And truth be told, if we look at the very next verse of chapter 4, in verse 44, it says, now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Like, it was right before it was about to get worse. Yes. It was getting darker. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it's really an example for us that when we are in our darkest of dark times, when we are fighting the depression, fighting the anxiety, fighting, you know, the bill collector or whatever it is that we're dealing with, to still remember who we are, mm-hmm. to have mm-hmm. an example yes. in order to, to be a testimony to other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it was about to get bad. And how and how is our witness when things are bad? That's, that's the, part. the, that's the that's question. Part. That's the part. I mean, when things are going well, yeah, you know, I'm I'm flexing in the legs. So, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. But I mean, what about when I'm being broken? Mm-hmm. Can people see Christ in me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about when I've had a negative career experience? Mm-hmm. Can people see his glory in me? Mm-hmm. What about when I've had a broken relationship? When I've, you know, we hear, we sing the song all the time. It's my winning season. Mm-hmm. What about when it's your losing season? Yeah, right. What yeah. about John 15 when, when you, you've been prosperous? Yes. But now it's time for you to get firm. Yes. So you can be even more fruitful. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yes. And, and you want to add more insult to injury, right? So this man really had an, an encounter with the gospel or he had an encounter with the church. Yes. That he, he possibly knew that with Jesus hanging on the cross, that that was a curse. Come on. Yes. Mm-hmm. Based on mm-hmm. Deuteronomy and Galatians, that yes. he, 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 he was in a, Jesus at that moment wasn't a curse. Mm-hmm. The, all three of them, ta- based off the of scripture, were a curse. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, even though he's a curse right now, mm-hmm. I've got enough faith to believe that it ain't going to stay that way. Mm-hmm. Take us you know? deeper, mm-hmm. Like, I, I've, got, I've got enough yes. faith to believe that Take this cross deeper. is not the end. Okay. Yes. Because if he's the Messiah, that means that there's some, there something that happens after, after this. that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, I, you know, I think. In my, in, 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 I guess in my spiritual eyes, I, I see it because I'm reading the book. Mm-hmm. But if I know that the Messiah can't be a curse, and he's a curse right now, mm-hmm. to have the faith to yes. believe that there's more after this, even though we're dying in this moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, like this life as we know it is over, but to believe that there's something beyond that. Yeah. Yes. Like, I think that that takes a whole different level of faith. I think the four of us and, and all the church watching, we have enough faith to believe that Christ died mm-hmm. and that yes. he rose and that he died for our sins. But if we were in that day and age and the facts were stacked against it, mm-hmm. would we still believe it? Yeah. But mm-hmm. I like what you said clearly, life as we know it. Yeah, yeah. And he was right. Life as they knew it was over. 
but the life was actually just beginning for the belief. Yeah. Well, I'm even encouraged about some of our ancestors, right? We know mm -hmm. um, Nina Simone's Strange Fruit, right? Mm -hmm. It references that, you know, that it, with the reference of Deuteronomy and Galatians, mm -hmm. who said where it says that if you um, if you hang from a tree, then you're cursed. And you're right? cursed by God. And you're cursed by God. Yeah. And so we know that our ancestry and, you know, throughout the Civil Rights Movement, that there's so many African Americans who were lynched mm -hmm. and who were mobbed and who were killed. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded of when me, you, and Aaron watched Emmett, um, Emmett Till's mm -hmm. story a couple of weeks ago about Mamie Till. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she had enough courage to see her baby, her own, her baby boy be killed and mm -hmm. then use that to fuel her, to push her into the forefront of a movement, mm -hmm. right? Like any any other kind of bad news like that normally is like your your last blow. Like mm -hmm. that is the thing that's gonna break your spirit. Mm -hmm. That is I can't go to any more picnics. I can't I can't see any more of my men hung, hung mm -hmm. from trees. I, I can't do it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But instead of this moment of wait a minute, Technically, that's a curse, mm -hmm. and now I have to believe past the curse. Mm -hmm. I have to believe that there's something on the other side of this. I have to believe that my son's death isn't in vain. I have to mm. believe that the struggle that I'm going through isn't in vain. That to be, be able to believe that yes, he may be on the cross next to me right now, but he's gonna be in paradise tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. He's gonna be in paradise today. Today, today. that's today. rich. Mm -hmm. yeah. today. That's rich. <laughs> yeah. Today. So, so how can we get to the point that we? that we recognize that that our our Christianity impacts people, not just when we're being blessed, mm -hmm. but even when we're being broken. I, I think it's like driving. Um, you, I get really afraid when I see somebody driving and they're only looking at the hood. You know, you, you, mm -hmm. you get in the car with somebody who's freshly, I remember Aaron was new mm -hmm. at driving. And, <laughs> <don't start> Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see somebody who's just look, you know, they drive for the hood. Like, and so they, they're not aware of what's a mile ahead. They're not aware of the car stopping in front. Of, they're just trying to get through the windshield. And I think a lot of us, <laughs> we look at life, we're just trying to see what's right in front of me. My God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just trying to make it to tomorrow. If I can just make it to the weekend. And I think we've got to have not just a, a tomorrow view, we've got to have an eternal view. Mm -hmm. Like we have, to, we have to live in a state that says, it don't matter about tomorrow. Yeah. I'm focused on heaven. After Avery's a personal wow. trainer, um, has a statement that he tells her all the time. He's like, all right, I'm ready for Jesus to come back. I'm just ready for heaven. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, can just wow. come, he, he can just come oh, on. Come on. <laughs> I, I'm just ready for heaven. He's like, let's just go. And I think That's we, powerful. we have to live in a way where we're so excited about heaven. And I think we have to be excited about heaven. Yes. Like we gotta talk about that heaven is not just angels sitting and playing harps, but it's a place. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I, I've always said this, you know, as, when you work, you, if you work a nine to five, mm -hmm. you are working for the weekend, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And then it becomes you're working for the next vacation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it gets a little further out with that. And yes. when you're talking about retirement, you're, you're working for the next uh, uh, golf tournament or whatever the case may be. But if your view, if your view is such that when we start out just working for the weekend and you grow to working for the next vacation, then you, you grow to working for, for retirement, the next step, you, we need to know. But the next step is to be yeah. looking for our eternal, yeah. our right. eternal blessing. We're always looking for the next event or the next, the be next best thing. Well, the best thing that could ever happen to us is to be with our father in paradise. And what yes. if we had that perspective now? Like, so mm -hmm. I've been challenging myself lately. I'm always telling about myself to y'all. <laughs> but tonight, and I really believe it sets so many people free. <laughs> it does. Your <laughs> your it does. So it's curious. beautiful. I probably tell too much. But one of the things that I think about is I don't want to be a working for the weekend type person. Right? Exactly. Like I'm in a season of my life where a lot of great things are happening, but it's a lot at one time. You know, mm -hmm. there's a house, there's mm -hmm. a wedding, there's a job, there's all of this different stuff on my plate. And I was, I'll just be honest, y'all. I was over at the Jones home on Sunday evening, and I leaned across <laughs> on my, my sweet sister Vanessa, Mama Jones, to me. And I was <laughs> like, oh, God, it's Monday and tomorrow. Like, it was Saturday. It was Sunday night. Was Sunday night. But I was already thinking about Monday. Mm -hmm. And I had this feeling, and I instantly didn't want it. I was like, I don't want to dread Monday. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the type of person who, you know, I prayed for this job at one point. I prayed to pass that bar. Mm -hmm. I prayed. I prayed. I cried. I sweated. I bled. I did all the things to pass it. 
I don't want to dread it now. Right. Mm-hmm. But when I have an eternal mindset of I work as unto the Lord, mm-hmm. of everything that I, like my labor is not in vain, that, mm-hmm. you know, progress is progress. That's not in the Bible, yes. but that's just a saying of mine. Of any other encouragement to say that, you know, what I'm doing matters. Mm-hmm. And what I'm doing gives reverence to God, even in this moment, even in dying on the cross. Like mm-hmm. how I choose to die can give honor and glory to, to God. God. Exactly. Yes. It, it, it really ch- challenges us instead of being instead of working for the weekend and you know then working for the next vacation, like and, mm-hmm. and seeing that as a counterfeit endurance, mm-hmm. right? To say, well, oh, well, you you got a little bit better, like you moved on, you edged on a little <laughs> bit. But instead to say, like, no, I'm focused on eternity. You know, I am. I want my father to say, well done, when, mm-hmm. when this is all over. It's not a idea. Kamara's statement is not this idea that life is just so horrible and it's not going to get better until Jesus comes. It's really more of a, this is as bad as it's going to get, so I might as well make the best of it because I know Jesus is coming. I know something mm-hmm. better is on the way. Yeah. Something better is on the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mel Skull, what, what does this say to someone who may actually feel like they're experiencing some type of curse? You know, there's some people that, that feel like life just redundantly, it just, they don't get the breaks. Things just never work out for them. And so can you speak to that? I think what this says is that there is power to break that curse. And, and, and I think we've got to talk about deliverance and frame it in a way the deliverance, although some for some of us it will come on this side, for others of us deliverance will come on the other side, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that if you want to experience deliver, the deliverance, whether your deliverance comes in this life or the next, you got to stay the course to see it. Yes. Um, and and I think the fact that there is hope for a man who, three men, <laughs> who who were who were miserably cursed, mm-hmm. um, and two of them come out and the curse is broken. I, w- I think we have to remember that the curse is broken. Like we, in our salvation, we have curse-breaking faith. Mm-hmm. You know, we have we have a curse, a curse-breaking faith. So although I may have this problem, and it seems like I'm going in this circle year after year after year after year, relationship after relationship after relationship, I've got to have enough faith that I believe that my faith says that I can see me free. Mm-hmm. Mm. I can see me whole. I yes. can, see, and because I can see it, I can believe it. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I can believe it, I can have it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I think instead of, and, and you know, we, we we shout over the blessings. I think we got to we got to see ourselves ourselves free. Yeah. I got yeah. to see myself happy. Mm-hmm. I got to see myself blessed. I got to see myself whole. And I think when we begin to see that, because God has promised that, our faith begins to break those curses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if I believe it, the Bible says that if I pray for something and I believed it when I prayed for it. It mm-hmm. is. It's yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, I've got. I got. I, we've got to start walking in that kind of faith, and we've got to change our confession, church. Mm-hmm. So many of us say that, Lord, we. You know, we, how many times have we come down for a prayer line? Mm-hmm. We've had somebody lay hands and pray for us, and then as soon as we get off the church lot, we're talking about how bad our knees hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about how how tough it is, mm-hmm. or we're talking about how how bad these bills are due. The the, the account could be negative 40, 42. And you owe forty two hundred, but the confession has got to be, my God shall supply all my needs. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I, the marriage may be falling apart, mm-hmm. but the confession has to be, let no man separate what God has put together. Mm-hmm. Yes. That you know, the, the confession you got the confession is made unto belief. Mm-hmm. So I've got to see it, I got to believe it, I got to speak it. And the truth is that once you can start seeing it in the spirit, you'll start seeing it in the, in the physical. And that's what we're trying to do here, church, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I think so much of everything that you just said reminded me of Revelation 11, 12, 11, mm-hmm. um, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. By the, the curse-breaking power happened on the cross, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The blood had shit was shed there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the, um, the part about our testimony, what are we saying? Mm-hmm. What are we recalling that God has done for us before? What are we hearing that God's doing with other believers? What are mm-hmm. we, you know, consistently feeding ourselves? And then what we say. And I want to interrupt you there. Go ahead. Because you got to remember that he said, when you come into your kingdom. His confession was never a question. No. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. it was never a question. Like, when, and I want to encourage somebody to pray a confession. Yes. Lord, you said. Mm-hmm. Yes. So mm-hmm. it is so. Mm-hmm. Not God, if it was so, so please you, if it would be your will. <laughs> Would you please maybe sort of kind of bless me with whatever it is? Mm-hmm. Mm. 
But decree, Lord, you said in your word that I was above and not beneath. Mm -hmm. Lord, you said that I would that you you wanted my you wanted my soul to prosper. You wanted yeah. you wanted you wanted me to prosper even as my soul prospered. Mm -hmm. You said that. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to we've got to change that confession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when he opened his mouth, he said, When you come in your kingdom, I want to go. He he was blessed then. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna let yeah. Avery finish up. Go ahead. No, I, I just was saying that, you know, we have to remember what we're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. We have to pray as well as act on it. Mm -hmm. Like we have to, you know, believe that the blood works and then we have to testify about it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in that same evidence of, you know, saying your confessions, believe saying what you want to see until you see what you say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Israel Holy would, would put it. Yes. But really having that resolve that, you know, I am the head and not the tail. I am above all men, not beneath. I have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed and I'm a blessing. I'm a lender and not a borrower. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and just like <laughs> Cole and I jokingly, um, it's not a joke because it's actually very serious. So I'm sure somebody's going to laugh. But I, we were just joking about it. I was like, we're going to speak to that bank account. That bank account is blessed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, yes. that mortgage is paid. Like, That's you know, it. Like, like That's no, it. We are, what, what I'm not about to do is throw away the foundation that our parents and our grandparents and our pastor and everybody Absolutely. else poured into us. Like, just because we're starting off, oh, y'all starting off on a lot. Mm-mm, mm-mm. My, and my, my father said that he would give us houses full of all good things that we yes. did not buy. Then, yes. like, like, if he can bless the um, Israelites as they're coming out of Egypt, he can bless me as I'm coming out the aisle, I'm just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just that, that holy resolve of even in my darkest hour, even in my even with my last breath, I'm going to choose to praise God. Amen. Yes, yes. And, and you know, I, I wanted to say as well, I, I think that one of the things that's profound about his faith is it gives us a glimpse of a faith that looks to what Vanessa talked about earlier, that future hope mm -hmm. that we have, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. even though God has given us all things to richly enjoy mm -hmm. as we live our journey here on earth, when you look at this man's prayer, it's profound. He didn't, he didn't ask Jesus, well, just let me come down from the cross. He didn't ask Jesus, you know, just stop this pain from all these stripes. That, he didn't ask for anything temporal or physical or natural. He just says, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And I, and I think this is a place where we as the body of Christ, we've got to get back to our eternal hope. Because when we, I know we're out of time, but when we recognize our eternal hope is in Christ, mm -hmm. as you pointed out earlier, minutes ago, it doesn't matter what we lose in this life. Mm -hmm. And we can lose some things in this life. Mm -hmm. We can even lose some things because of our faith mm -hmm. and embracing Christ. Mm -hmm. But as long as we have Christ, what did Paul says, everything is lost mm -hmm. only to gain him. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, family, I just want to close um, with this last statement. Um, let us be like that man on the cross um, next to Jesus. And let us have a prayer of, Lord, remember us. Like, put us back together. Remember literally means to read and then put together the members. So let us pray that God will put us back together, restore us, encourage us, and equip us on this journey. And yes. we are going to see you all in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you.